Hi, this is Mariam and today I am going to talk about COP27, Conference of Paris 27, which happens every year, COP in different parts of the world. And this year, COP27, Conference of Paris 27, under UNFCCC, Egypt government is hosting uh, in their coastal area, Sharm el Sheikh, and it's going to continue for two weeks. Uh, it has started already this Sunday and um, um, in the beginning, it was like always inaugural plenary by their uh, president. Uh, and that was followed by country statements uh, by different countries uh, who are uh, party to UNFCCC uh, uh, PAC. And uh, it has like, conference of parties have like 198 countries who are signatory to it. And uh, it depends uh, how many countries are going to participate this year because uh, some of the world leaders are still reaching. Some have has not sent their um, uh, leaders uh, to be part of it. Uh, but civil society, media, and rest of the countries are there. And uh, it's uh, country statements uh, normally takes one or two days uh, to complete. And on first day uh, after inaugural, there were like three roundtable discussions. One was on uh, food security. The other was uh, on a just transition. And the third one was uh, innovative finance for climate and development. Of course, those, these are, of course, really important, you know, uh, topics to discuss but this COP27 has agenda related to water, young voices, climate finance, uh, food security, um, agriculture, there are a lot of like they have divided this agenda on in thematic days in which there would be like along with negotiations there would be like different uh, uh, thematic areas and different sessions side by side in different zones they have like blue zones green zones etc etc uh, so media civil society and observers are there to see uh, but there are news coming out from Sharm el Sheikh that uh, youngsters uh, do not have access to to the zone where negotiations are happening uh, and um, they are trying to figure out how they should be intervening in those and how they can make their point of view over there. So let's see how uh, they are going to be successful. Um, this year's uh, COP is particularly of great significance because it has uh, loss and damage as an agenda point. And of course, the credit goes to uh, all the developing countries, but particularly Pakistan, because Pakistan is the chair of G77 plus China uh, this year. And a lot of efforts are uh, being made by uh, our, uh, our minister, Shairaman Saiba, our government, uh, our ambassador, of course, uh, who is the chair, uh, 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 was chair, I should say, of uh, this uh, COP uh, G77 plus China pact. So, um, uh, talking about Pakistan, because that is my country, and I'm particularly interested to talk about that. And you must have followed the news of recent floods, which has impacted like a lot of a lot of people in Pakistan. Uh, to to exactly say, uh, it, it's really difficult to say exactly, but the numbers uh, being reported by the officials and by the government of Pakistan are like 33 million people have been affected and they have lost their livelihood, their source of income, their animals, their crops, their fruit orchards. They have lost their dear ones, kids, mothers. They, there is disease outbreak on the ground. Uh, they do not have homes. Winter is coming up already in Pakistan and government of Pakistan is unable to provide them relief because there is huge resource gap and this is the impact caused by developed and rich nations because of their emissions we and other developing countries are suffering so loss and damage are associated uh, with uh, such climate change climate change related events be it flood heat wave droughts droughts are the worst droughts are happening in uh, africa of course from quite a time now and and uh, there are a lot of bad news coming from Africa as well. But there are a lot of a lot of sessions at COP27 related to uh, Africa as well. And uh, how uh, in terms of just transition, incorporating young voices um, and other sort of, you know, collaboration and partnerships can be made to help Africa. But efforts should also be made to help Pakistan as well, because Pakistan is also vulnerable and it has impacted very badly most recently and of course in the past as well 
So uh, Pakistan is, uh, the good news is Pakistan is also hosting like 22 panels uh, when Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif would be coming back to Pakistan uh, on most probably 9 and from 9 to 18 these sessions would be uh, happening and uh, that I followed from the Twitter of uh, our Climate Change Minister Shahi Rahman Saiba and uh, no doubt Shahi Rahman Saiba is a crowd puller and she has all the international media attention and she is going to use it and uh and, and it's true uh and and it's true because uh, during class she uh, has been highlighting the vulnerabilities uh being faced by pakistanis due to these floods and communities facing and she was continuously telling bbc cnn other other in international media now why i'm saying this that this is great thing that international media is giving attention because you know voices are amplified by media outlets and this year the good news is that this year not only state-owned television by pakistan which is tv is covering corporate itself, it does cover every time by the way but this year our private channels are also giving attention to pop which is good thing i have seen some clips uh, of the dawn, dawn news which is great i mean it's a great way to put pressure on uh, you know uh, rich countries and on negotiation processes of course it, it is always positive thing and i would urge other media channels as well as to please put aside the political tensions and political discussion in prime time and talk about climate change and negotiations going on because it is very crucial these two weeks are very crucial and just give you two weeks to climate change because your existence your life your survival does depend on that and climate change is a cross-sectoral issue okay so please give pay attention towards it so to to pakistani delegation and to what they are saying be united and amplify their voices fight for this country instead of just sitting behind the keyboards and you know, much slugging um, different political parties uh, who has gone to COP27, you know, utilize this opportunity to support your country because if there are repetitive floods, repetitive and prolonged heat waves, uh, glacial lake outburst floods, and a lot of other uh, sea level rise and everything related to it, you, if this country won't be able to survive because of climate change. And how would you be, you know, fighting against each other and against other political parties? So let's unite and support your Pakistani delegation over there. So uh, talking ba coming back to COP27 and Pakistani delegation, uh, they have held a press conference on Sunday evening and uh, in which Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif addressed the international media along with uh, uh, other Pakistani delegation as well as UN Secretary General as well. He was also there. So Prime Minister uh, Pakistan Sheva Sharif, uh, he highlighted the vulnerability of uh, Pakistanis due to most recent floods. And uh, these vulnerabilities, uh, he, he uh, particularly uh, draw, drew attention of international media towards losses and damages associated to most recent floods. And these are like dollar 30 billion we required dollar 30 billion from the rich nation due to their emissions we are suffering and our communities need those for rehabilitation efforts so put put it uh, in in our account and give us that money it's 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 compensation it's not help it's it's not something that you you should be saying okay you are doing something really great for us no uh, you have causes, so you have to pay it. Now, second uh, thing uh, which is most important is that our uh, young uh, Pakistani minister is also there, beloved, but was a Dai, who is also spreading word in media and at Pakistani Pavilion. Uh, and uh, I have seen his uh, interview with CNN, which was great to New York. He's highlighting the vulnerabilities and losses and damage ag agenda. Uh, associated uh, with uh, with with, the, with these most recent floods, uh, it's amazing to see that uh, this Pakistani delegation has like members from different political parties and how they are united internationally to put Pakistan case forward, and uh, it just melts my heart. And I think this should be the case um, when it comes to the development of Pakistan as well, um, uh, and, uh, and, and and other matters as well. Because internationally, we should not be embarrassing each other, but support each other for the betterment of country. That is like great agenda. And uh, on on the uh, during this, uh, you know. Uh, uh press conferences and after even this press conference uh, prime minister shahbaz sharif uh, informally also met like a lot of world leaders and uh, i have seen on social media that you know a lot of youngsters are uh, who are not uh, supporting pmln i'm not supporting pmln either uh, or any other party but 
they are just making fun that you know it, these were not uh, planned meetings. Um, it, it's true, those con can't be planned meetings. But if you have opportunity that you have other world leaders over there and you're, you're just going and grabbing their attention for like two minutes, a few seconds and telling about Pakistan, it's vulnerability. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. You should utilize every opportunity to highlight those cases. And uh, of course, uh, it, it should continue like that. And uh, hats off to Prime Minister Shahbaz Shri for doing it. Uh, I mean, Pakistan needs that, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not funny. It's not funny for there are no there are not any organized uh, side meetings apart from negotiations uh, with other world leaders and Prime Minister Shahbaz Chief and Minister Shahir Rahman Sahib are reaching out to them. It's a good thing to do. It's not a bad thing. So let's just not sit behind your keyboards and make fun of those because you are not supporter of a certain party. So um, let's unite for our country. Let's uh, keep pushing rich nations during these negotiations and uh, keep uh, amplifying our voices uh, and be the voice of our Pakistani delegation who is over there. And let's see what uh, these negotiations have at the end of the call because normally solutions and the final negotiations, those are announced uh, on, on like last days of uh, conference, which would be like on 17 or 18 either. So um, let's see what this COP has, particularly for uh, developing countries and what rich nations are going to offer in terms of compensation to the developing and underdeveloped uh, islands. Uh, watch this space for more updates. Till then, goodbye.